everyone. My name is Laura Simsek. I'm from Ultra. Thank you very much for choosing to join us today on the webinar, A Natural Inulin-Based Emulsifier for Formulation Solutions. Joining us today uh, is Patrick Gomery, who is the Managing Director at GoBiotics. GoBiotics is an innovative company with a focus on the skin microbiota. The, their product line uses only renewable vegetable sources with very little impact on the environment and consists of natural prebiotics, functional ingredients, natural polysaccharides, as well as um, rice derivatives. So today, Patrick will be diving into the technology Inutech SL1. This is a natural oil and water emulsifier composed of inulin from chicory root and lauric acid from coconut oil. He's going to explain how the hydrated inulin creates smaller droplet sizes than standard emulsifiers and ends up being able to create a strong film um, around the oil droplets, creating a primary emulsification system that leaves a pleasant aesthetic on the skin. He'll also cover the versatility of the ingredient, um, how it can act as a co-emulsifier, as a robust tool to help correct emulsion problems. Uh, today's webinar is being recorded. Any questions that you have, please feel free to go ahead and put into the chat box and we will address them at the end of the webinar. So with that being said, uh, thanks in advance for your attention and I'm gonna turn this over to Patrick. Thank you, Laura, for this intensive introduction. Um, and actually, Amanda already set the tone of this presentation <laughs> because I believe that our industry is really at a turning point. Formulations you had from three, five years ago, you can just throw them in the garbage because we are not allowed to use uh, toxylated emulsifiers anymore. You cannot use silicones anymore to improve the skin feel or microplastics. Um, also, carbomers cannot be used. So we become more and more limited. And on the other hand, we have the consumer who wants more and more, more vitamins, more activity, which means more instability or more challenging formulas. I know there is a famous sentence, less is more. It sounds good, but less is usually less. Uh, when you have less ingredients, you can do less things. Inutech SL1 is not a new molecule, but lately he became very popular because he seems to give partially an answer to many challenges you have as a formulator. And one of them is that Inutech SL1, when added to a formulation, will make unbreakable, unbreakable emulsions. Of course, this is an exaggerated title. It will be almost unbreakable, and we will discover together what you can do, what you cannot do with that emulsifier. Actually, I describe Inutech SL1 in short as one of the last emulsifiers you can go to, natural emulsifiers you can go to, um, when all the others will let you down. And you have to think about extreme formulations with a lot of salt, for instance, 20% dead sea salt, or a lot of um, uh, essential oils, or these challenging preservatives like caprolyl glycol, pentylene glycol, they are used more and more, but they give also more and more instability problems. Inutech SL1 is much more than just a stabilizer. It will also, if you want it or not, it will happen. It will improve the skin feel of your formulation. And last but not least, it will also boost the performance of your actives, which is actually what the consumer wants. What is this molecule? Well, it's based on two ingredients. One of them is inulin. And inulin is a polysaccharide extracted from the chicory root. You can see it there at the left. It's an ugly root, but this root grows mainly in Belgium, the north of France, uh, in Germany, and in Holland. And the, the plant is actually pumping whole year his root full of this sugar so that he can survive the winter. Unfortunately for the plant, he doesn't make it to the winter because the root is taken out just before the winter and the inulin is extracted. Inulin is a polysaccharide on which a L'Oreal chain is grafted. Because to have an emulsifier, you need a water-soluble part, which is the inulin, and an oil-soluble part, which is the L'Oreal from coconut. Now, if we look at the molecule of inulin, it looks a little bit like a snake. It has a glucose head, which you can see in light blue, and a fructose body. And I use the word 
snake on purpose because a snake is very flexible. Well, this molecule also is very flexible. It can take different shapes. It has more or less 60 fructose units. So actually it's a long polymer. And on the 60 fructose units, three L'Oreal chains are grafted. The product itself is not pure. It contains 75% glycerin, which keeps the emulsifier solubilized. And the inky name of the solubilizer is inulin L'Oreal carbamate. For those who like chemistry, this is how chemically it looks like. So you can see here on top the glucose head, the fructose body, and then three L'Oreal chains grafted on it. That's the chemistry, but let's have a look why it is an unbreakable stabilizer. Well, it will work completely different as your standard emulsifiers. At the left side, you see how a standard emulsifier stabilizes the oil droplets. It has to cover completely the, the oil droplet. And how does an emulsifier do that? It goes with the lipophilic tail. For instance, L'Oreal, Stearyl, Cetearyl chain goes into the oil and the hydrophilic head sticks out of the oil. In this way, the oil is completely covered with something that is water soluble. And in this way, the oil stays stable in the emulsion. But emulsifiers are not immediately making emulsions. The first molecules that enter into the water will make micelles. This is a marketing named as liquid crystals. Liquid crystals sounds very good. Micelles is more the technical term. But micelles are not always positives because micelles feel sticky because it's actually the, sol the, the emulsifier solubilized in the water, and that always feels sticky. Also, it's aggressive. The micelle is what makes an emulsifier, and especially surfactants, so aggressive. But what is very important with standard emulsifiers, they have to cover 100% the oil droplet. If you leave a small opening, this will create instability. Now, how does Inutec SL1 work? Well, Inutec SL1 has three lipophilic chains. And we will start with the first lipophilic chain here, this green one. This goes into the oil. And to this lipophilic tail, there is a fructose unit connected, which sticks also to the oil. But next to this fructose unit, you have a second fructose unit, which has no L'Oreal. Fructose loves water, does not like oil. So it's going away from the oil. And the neighbor one is also going away even further. The next one also further. But at a certain point, they have to come back because here is the third L'Oreal chain. Uh, the second one, and here is the third one. So basically we make loops. And if we go back to the standard system, we have one hydrophilic hat. Here we have multiple hydrophilic hats. So standard emulsifier puts one layer around the oil droplet. Inutec SL1 will put six to seven layers around each oil droplet. Of course, it looks like there is much less emulsifier here, but this is to, to explain the drawing. In reality, it will also cover the whole oil droplet. Now, Inutec SL1, because it makes no micelles in the water, will also give you no viscosity at all. So if you want to make sprays, uh, wet wipe emulsions, lotions, that's an ideal emulsifier. But we will see that you can perfectly also make butters and very thick creams. The inulin has a very, uh, is very hygroscopic and cannot be dehydrated. So once it is in the water, it will keep the water very strongly around this molecule. Now, when you add salt to an emulsion, usually the emulsion breaks because salt is stealing away the water from the emulsifier. Now, salt is not able to steal away the water from inulin, which means that you can have fun as much as possible with salt. Now, maybe you will say, yeah, I don't add salt to my emulsion, but you add often salt without knowing it. For instance, sodium benzoate, potassium sorbate, sodium anisate. This is all salt, which can and will affect the stability and the viscosity of your emulsion. Inutec SL1 is not affected by this. 
And actually, here comes the good news slide. These are all the compatibilities, and you will see it's almost everything. Uh, it's compatible with all anionic ingredients, so you can perfectly make emulsions in the presence of surfactants, like sodium lauryl sulfate. Uh, cationic ingredients, it's compatible. You can use citrimonium chloride, you can uh, use arginine derivates. Uh, of course, non-ionic ingredients, all foaming agents, all wetting agents, all thickeners are compatible. Oil, everything that is oil-soluble will be emulsified by Inutec SL1, and this up to 60% of oil. And that means also essential oils. So basically, you could make an emulsion with 60% of lemon oil. Of course, this would be highly allergic, but it's technically possible. Pigments, UV filters, um, it's all possible. Also, all the preservatives, although there is one preservative that can give problems, and that's glyceryl caprylate. Glyceryl caprylate with Inutec SL1 needs to be added at the end of the emulsion, because if you add it in the beginning, he will participate in the emulsification uh, process. But all the other um, uh, preservatives have no problem. Actually, it's much easier to show what is not possible. So hydrogen peroxide is not possible. Reducing agents like theoglycolate is not possible. The pH cannot go below 4.1. Now, that's maybe a strange one. You would expect 4. Actually, it is 4. But when it's 4, it can also become 3.9. And then it will become unstable. So 4.1 is really the limit. There is no real upper limit. Ethanol, more than 8% is not possible because then our emulsifier gets drunk and the emulsion will break immediately. Aluminium, zirconium salts is also not possible. But take a look, everything that is not possible is actually what you're not allowed to use anymore. Alcohol, aluminium salts, zirconium salts. Um, yeah, actually, Inutec SL1 will fit with all the ingredients that are wanted by the consumer. Now, I promise you that Inutec SL1 will help you 100% against the instability oil separation. There are two reasons why you can have oil separation in an emulsion. It's when two oil droplets are banging into each other. That happens quite often in sprayable emulsions where the oil droplets can move. And when they bang, it's like a car, the bumper protects the, the passengers. Well, the bumper is the emulsifier film. Because Inutec SL1 is a flexible molecule, remember the snake, when two droplets bump into each other, the, the bumper is flexible and the, the oil cannot meet each other. You cannot have this kind of instability. The second instability is a little bit more complex to understand. It's called Oswald ripening. And this is a nasty instability because it's an instability that takes time. So it can take a week, no, not a week, a month, five months, two years. So that's an instability that you can have in the shelves. And what is Oswald ripening? It's when the droplet size have, have a different size. So when you have a small droplet and a big droplet, the big droplet will suck all the oil out of the small droplet. So it's a little bit the story of the rich and the poor. The richer, they get richer, and the poor get poorer. It's the same in emulsion. The droplets are not touching each other. So this instability you can also have with butters and thick creams. We will see in a moment that with Inutec SL1, all the droplets are quite equal. So Oswald ripening will maybe occur in 100 years. Now, I promised you a lot, but I also promised that Inutec SL1 is not going to help you against creaming. Creaming is where the light oil, because oil is always lighter than water, the oil droplets are going up. And on the bottom, you get a transparent layer, which you have uh, naturally from milk. That's why it's called creaming. If you want to prevent that, don't count on Inutec SL1. You will have to add uh, colloids like calungan, xantangan, these type of molecules. Before I go on to more practical information, it's also nice to know that Inutec SL1 has an impeccable toxicology. It's a polymer, 
Well, it's a natural polymer, it's not a microplastic, which means it cannot penetrate. It cannot penetrate in your eye, it cannot penetrate in the skin, so there is no eye irritation, there is no skin irritation. And when I say no, it's really zero. Now, when you go to very mild emulsifiers like CTRL glucoside, they have an irritation index of 0, 1, 0, 2. Also very mild, but not, never zero. Um, Inutec SL1 is also biodegradable, is not toxic to uh, fishes or to any aquatic life. And also for those who want to know the toxicology, the full toxicology is known. But how do you use Inutec SL1? How can you make all kinds of emulsions? Well, you can use it in two ways. You can use it as the main emulsifier, then you will get textures that you never were able to obtain before, or you can use it as a co-emulsifier. Let's start, how do you use it as a main emulsifier? Well, the first question is of course, how much am I going to use? Well, you need to use 2 to 8% Inutec SL1 based on the amount of oil. I want to remember you that Inutec SL1 is not pure emulsifier. It's only 25% emulsifier, which means that you need 0.5 to 2% emulsifier to the oil phase. So let's do a small calculation. If you want to emulsify 10% of oil, that means that you have to use 0.2 to maximum 0.8% of Inutec SL1, or calculated to the pure emulsifier, 0.05. Yes, you hear it well, 0.05 can already make emulsions. If you want to go to 50% of oil, well, then it's five times more. You use 1 to 4% Inutec SL1, or calculated to the emulsifier, 0.25% can emulsify 50% of oil. So this is much less than other emulsifiers, which means that Inutec SL1 will give you no feeling at all, no greasiness, no stickiness, because you use so, so few. How do you add it? Well, since it's dispersed in glycerine, you add it in the water phase, which is a bit different from most of the other emulsifiers. You always have to combine it with a colloid to avoid creaming. And then there is something that I cannot explain, but it is like this. When you use less than 25% of oil, you always need a tiny little amount of a co-emulsifier, 0.2 to 0.3%. Now, what is a co-emulsifier? It's everything that has an HLB from 3 to 20. So you can combine, for instance, uh, Inutec SL1 with glyceryl stearate, which is cheap and also stabilizes very well together with Inutec SL1. What happens if you don't use a co-emulsifier? Well, on first glance, you will look like that you have a nice emulsion. But if you look carefully under a certain angle, you will always see on the surface like a kind of rainbow, like oil on the river. And it cannot be avoided. It's very strange. If you go to more than 25% of oil, then you don't need a co-emulsifier. You would expect the opposite, but it's not. And we cannot explain why. At what temperature do you need to emulsify Inutec SL1? Well, you choose. Uh, you can do it at room temperature if all the ingredients are liquid. But in case you use, for instance, glyceryl stearate, you will have to work at 60, 65 degrees. But you can perfectly also emulsify at 90 degrees. It's of no importance. If you emulsify at 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees, you will always obtain exactly the same emulsion. And how do you add the oil to the water? Well, you can add the oil to the water very fast, or you can do it slowly, or you can add the water to the oil. Uh, it doesn't matter. You will always obtain exactly the same uh, emulsion. That's all very interesting, but there is one but. There is always uh, a but. It's that you need to homogenize. Our Inutec SL1, how powerful he is, he's extremely lazy. He needs a little push to start the emulsion. And without homogenization, you cannot make an emulsion. The shear 
of homogenizing is also totally unimportant. We did tests at 1,000 up to 20,000 RPM, and we always obtained the same stability, the same viscosity, everything was exactly the same. Of course, the whole emulsion needs to go through the emulsifier, and basically it means on the lab you will need to homogenize three minutes, in a pilot scale up to 30 kilo, more or less five minutes, and for production, five to 15 minutes. Usually more than 15 minutes is not necessary. And this is a very interesting characteristic. The emulsifier has been launched in 2003. And since then, we had, from all the customers, we have not one difference. What is produced in the lab will be produced in production. And that is nice to know for the formulator, because as a formulator, when you go to the production for the first time, it's a little bit stress, because in the production, it might become not stable, your emulsion, or the viscosity is different. Well, with Inutech as a one, these problems will not occur. Just that we are on the same page, homogenizing, these are equipments to homogenize. And strangely enough, also a simple soup mixer uh, does the job but a normal propeller will not do the job. Once you homogenized, it's like you gave him a small push and the Inutech SL1 starts to emulsify like hell. Now, when you use Inutech SL1 alone, then you will have no viscosity and that's the ideal cho choice for sprays, for instance. That's why Inutech SL1 is very popular for sun sprays. Um, but you still have the creaming problem. Then, of course, you need to add a colloid, but you cannot add too much colloid because then your emulsion is not sprayable anymore, but it becomes more thick. Well, perfect uh, stabilizers against creaming in sprays is Calengum, Vegum HS, or Avisal PC611 from uh, FMC. Sclerotum gum is also a very good stabilizer, but it's very expensive. If you go to lotions, then you can use, yeah, I wrote here acrylates, carbomeres, but that's a little bit dated information. You can use guar gums, xanthan gums, cellulose gums are also ideal choices. But maybe you don't just want to make sprays, you also want to make creams and butters. What do you do? Well, here comes something, uh, yeah, amazing. When you combine Inutech SL1 with a co-emulsifier, 0.15% already, then suddenly the viscosity boosts. So you can see here at the beginning, we have no um, co-emulsifier. Then we add a co-emulsifier, here polyglycyl tenlorate, sucloserate, sorbitanstearate, and cityaryl glucoside. And you go here from, yeah, actually it's 4,000 uh, millipascal seconds, which is quite liquid still. Just by adding 0.15% of something, a co-emulsifier, you can go up to a butter. Now, this is interesting for two reasons, because by adding a little bit of a co-emulsifier, you make a big jump in viscosity, but you do not need cetyaryl alcohol anymore. And cetyaryl alcohol is not dangerous or anything, but the, those who work in natural cosmetics knows that cetyaryl alcohol gives you whitening on the skin. When you, uh, when you spread it out. Now, if you can thicken an emulsion without cityary alcohol or with less cityary alcohol, you will have no whiting effect on the skin. Of course, you can perfectly thicken the emulsion also with cityary alcohol. Uh, it starts from 2%. And I personally always use 2% cityary alcohol because I mainly formulate for cold countries like uh, yeah, Belgium, Holland, Germany. Poland, and people here, they like to have this creamy feel. But if you like to have watery emulsions, you can skip the fatty alcohols. So let's summarize. What do you need to make a stable emulsion with Inutech SL1? Of course, Inutech SL1. Uh, you can use a fatty alcohol and a co-emulsifier and a colloid. And then you can knock yourself out with the oils, with the, the actives, peptides, vitamins, retinol, go ahead, it will all be stable. But in my career, I realized that 
for a formulator, changing an emulsifier is a big, big thing. Everyone likes to stay with his standard emulsifier. But sometimes your standard emulsifier is letting you down. Some emulsions you can't do. And then you have to go to another one. Well, not with SL1. You can keep your well-known and trusted emulsifier and you simply add Inutech SL1. And then also something will happen. You have to add the Inutech SL1 to the water face and your emulsifier you can add to the face you need to add it, usually to the oil face. The amount of Inutech SL1 you need now is very low, 0 0.2 to maximum 1.2. 1.2 is really exceptional. And then something happens with your standard emulsifier. Suddenly, he can emulsify also at room temperature, at least when he's liquid. Suddenly, it doesn't matter how you add the oil to the water or the water to the oil, everything seems to be possible. So what Inutec SL1 did is enlarging the possibility of another emulsifier. For instance, if you have an emulsifier that is not compatible with salt, with a little bit Inutec SL1, he became compatible with salt and the viscosity will not be affected. Now, the reason why Inutec SL1 can do that, it's not magic, it's actually very simple. It's making all the droplets equal. On the top side, you can see an emulsion. It was an emulsion with 35% uh, oil and 1.5% cerebral glucoside. Uh, it was homogenized. It was produced at 75 degrees, this emulsion. And then you see that the average droplet size is five micrometer. And you also have droplets of one micrometer and 12 micrometer. And that of course is asking for Oswald ripening. Of course, it will take a while, but it will happen. When you add to this emulsion Inutec SL1, then suddenly all the droplets became 1.5 micrometer, so much smaller, but also they all became more equal. The diversity was only one to three. And this emulsion will be much more stable. But when you have smaller droplets, also the skin feel is more elegant. We did a test with Montanov 68, which is a quite well-known and respected natural emulsifier, but he has one disadvantage. He uh, gives whitening on the skin because of the high content of cetyl alcohol in the Montana 68. In the first column, we used 5% to have a very thick cream, but that was too heavy. And then we added, we diminished the Montana 68 to 1%, which was not stable. Well, you could make an emulsion, but it didn't pass all the stability tests. When to this emulsion, and this is formula C, we add 0.4% Inutec SL1. Then we ended up again with the same viscosity as in the beginning, but the formula was much lighter. And when you doubled the Inutec SL1, you also doubled the viscosity because the droplets also became more, uh, sorry, not more, they became smaller. If you would triple the Inutec SL1, nothing more would happen because there is a limit of making smaller droplets. To visualize the viscosity, you can see it here. Montanov 68 at 5% gives you 20,000 millipascal a second. 1% uh, gives you almost no viscosity. And 1% with 0.4% Inutec SL1 gives you again the initial viscosity. So Inutec SL1 really is very versatile but you get also a present for free. It's the skin feel. I actually didn't tell you what was the difference between using 0 0.5, 2% Inutec SL1 and 8% Inutec SL1. Well, it's not the stability that will change. Doesn't matter if you add more or less, but the lightness, the more Inutec SL1 you add to an emulsion, the lighter the emulsion becomes. And this has all to do with the small droplets. The human skin can only feel particles of one micrometer. Everything less than one micrometer, we cannot feel. But also when the particles are very small, we don't feel them so good anymore. Which means if you have petrolatum pure on your skin, this feels very greasy. But if you emulsify it to one micrometer, you don't feel the greasiness of petrolatum anymore. And that's what Inutec SL1 does. It takes away all the greasiness. 
It will also improve the, the spreadability because when all the droplets are equal, they roll much better over the skin and also the stickiness will become. Now, as a formulator, you, you are often confronted that you need to increase the viscosity of an emulsion. But imagine that everybody likes the skin feel of that emulsion, but the viscosity needs to go up. That means that you have to add a thickener. But adding a thickener is always yeah, increasing stickiness, sometimes increasing greasiness, and usually the spreadability goes down. You would love to have a thickener that thickens the emulsion, but leaves the skin feel unaltered. Well, Inutec SL1 is almost like this, because Inutec SL1, when you add it to an existing emulsion, always the viscosity goes up because there is a co-emulsifier or the main emulsifier. But unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, the stickiness always goes away, the greasiness goes down, and the spreadability goes up. Stickiness and spreadability improvement is positive, but sometimes greasiness going down is not wanted. Um, and I have to warn you, it is not possible to make greasy emulsions with Inutec SL1. They always will be light. Even if you use a high amount of butters, uh, of uh, oils, you will not, uh, it will not get greasy. It's actually like adding alcohol. Alcohol has the same skin feel effect. Now, we come to the last part of Inutec SL1 is to improve the performance of actives. An active to be active needs to penetrate. And of course you add the cream on top of the epidermis, but the skin is, an, is a barrier. It will defend itself against the penetration of actives. So we have to find ways to improve the penetration of actives. And we do that usually with ethanol, with a lot of emulsifier, by a little bit destroying the skin barrier or by heat. But the most efficient way to improve the penetration of an active is through a patch. So you put a patch, below the patch is the active, and the only way the active can go is in the skin. Actually, the, the active, uh, the, the patch, works like this, that the, the active is constantly in touch with the skin. And it's like uh, with a tissue, if you, you put water on the tissue, the, the tissue will absorb it. And that's what's happening with the skin. Now, of course, you cannot do a patch with an emulsion. And we will see that when you make smaller droplets, it's like a liquid patch. On the right side, on the left side, you have big droplets, standard emulsifier. On the right side, you have the small droplets, like from Inutec SL1. When you put an emulsion on the skin, what is actually happening is that the water will evaporate. We feel this as, oh, the skin is, the, the emulsion is penetrating. But that's impossible because nothing can penetrate in a few seconds in the skin. But by the fact that the water evaporates, the oil gets concentrated. And you can see on the left that with the, the big droplets, the skin is not well covered. With smaller droplets, the skin is very well covered. And when further you rub the, skin, the emulsion in the skin, more water is evaporating. And on the left side with the big droplets, all the water evaporates. On the right side, still under the oil, some water will be left because oil works like a cap. Here it is more visualized that with bigger droplets, the oil is less in contact than with smaller droplets. You can see here four contact points and here are maybe 15 contact points. This is the same amount of oil, but better spread. That's the theory. Let's have a look what the a test is proving. This is a test performed on 20 persons. And we were using Santella Asiatica, titrated Santella Asiatica, to improve the firmness and the skin elasticity. The gray bar is the skin firmness improvement and the green bar is the skin elasticity improvement. First, we put the Santella Asiatica in a gel with butylene glycol and we see that there is an improvement of skin and skin firmness and skin elasticity. When we put the same Santella Asiatica in an emulsion, then the 
skin firmness and the skin elasticity is much better already, statistically better. When we add to that emulsion Inutec SL1, so the droplets become much smaller, then we also improve the skin firmness and the skin elasticity. That's of course not the Inutec SL1 doing this, but it's the medium, the, the, the emulsion with smaller droplets always has a better contact and a longer contact with the skin. Now, since Inutec SL1 is so versatile, uh, you can use it in every type of product that is an emulsion. So you can think of course about day creams, body lotions, but also shower butters, shower creams. Baby care is an interesting one because the molecule is very safe. And yeah, for babies, this is of course wanted. You can use it in cleansing products, color cosmetics, and the biggest uh, application is sun care because Inutec SL1 masks the bad skin feel of uh, sunscreens. Sunscreens usually don't feel great. Well, with Inutec SL1, they have almost no feeling, skin feeling anymore. Well, I'm coming to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. And if you have...